Hey everybody, I'm back. I'm gonna get everyone else to come and join us, but um, I have an itchy elbow. <laughs> While we're waiting for the others to join, a, quick, a couple of quick updates for me. So um, on Friday, I am going in for <clears throat> a tra hair transplant surgery. Um, so I'm a little bit scared, <laughs> to be honest with you. I <coughs> Sorry, it's just a bop word. <clears throat> Anyways, so <laughs> my eyes are leaky. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going in for hair transplant surgery on Friday. And um, I'm a little bit scared, to be totally honest with you. They're doing like a little bit of filling in in the top. Um, and they're cutting out a strip out of the back of my head. Um, recovery is not the greatest it takes a long time um but uh it's something that's gonna probably help me with my confidence and whatnot so anyways i have surgery on friday um looking forward to it but i'm more looking forward to the recovery <laughs> not getting being over the recovery than anything else um let me add in all these other people um while we're talking oops dun, dun, dun. Okay, we got one. Hello. One, Amaya. Let's see if we can get Hannah. We got Hannah. Now let's see if we can find her. Oh, there she disappeared. Shit, I had her and then she's gone. Oh. Instagram is so fucking irritating. <laughs> I, I love it. I, really I used to, like to never swear, swear until I, swear I started hanging out much. with Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> I shut the fuck up. <laughs> I can't stop. I can't help it. I like. I learn. I I swear. Like it's like it's. It's part of the vernacular. You gotta know, like, literally, it's like, it's, it's, it's like adding spices on to your on food. Netflix. <laughs> I have to swear. Alex, you look frozen. <laughs> Swearing is part of it. it yeah. It's so, so hard to switch it off with with the kids. Without the kids. <laughs> Swearing with, with the kids are around. When I was as a teacher, like so like I had to bite my lips so hard. <laughs> Can I ask you guys a question as far as when you started swear. transitioning? How did your jobs accept you? And like, did you have any trouble fighting, like trying to get that respect? Did you lose respect, all that? Me? And maybe my, um, you should answer that question first. Okay. I think yours um, is the most interesting. Well, yeah. for me, uh, working in government where, where I'm at, um, you know, before I was like the, the, the guy that if you wanted to go have a good time and, you know, rough and tumble and all that kind of craziness, uh, I was the person to go to and I never had any problem, you know, finding someone to, to go out in the field with me. But, um, could say when I came out and I started, I, when I came out, I came out at home first and told the close people first. And then I didn't like start changing the way I dressed or, you know, any of that until a while. It took me like, I don't know, six months before I started wearing like gender neutral clothes where it was kind of like, hmm, it's it's baggy you know it's not really like super tight feminine like what we all wear now but um uh yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna like, yeah, like, like sometimes I, I make my it's always funny like i'm trying to like find out in my closet Every art like scandalous is, like, and i just low don't cut all the way like, down like, to the abs <laughs> 
but um, <laughs> yeah, I have like 200 crop tops, and that's it. <laughs> that's all I own. <laughs> I literally just, whenever I go, whenever I look for clothes, I'm like, oh, With good a reason, top. though. I grabbed yeah. that shirt. You make the most so I'm always though. cold. So, Thanks, <laughs> I like, I have, I bought, I went to, I went to Lululemon and I bought, I have this one shirt. It's like, I bought, it's like, I got the exact same shirt different in colors, four yeah. different I got four of the exact same shirt, just in different colors. And it's literally because with all my dresses. I love the way it looks, so I bought four of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we should not talk well, about this because I'm like going to get uh, You know, for me, it was when I, I started like awful. changing the clothes, that's when people would start to notice and they would make a comment or something. And it was like, you would kind of, I would just pull, pull them aside. And I would say, look, I am trans. I'm still learning everything about it. I don't know a whole lot. Like, this is all new to me. I don't know what's up and what's down anymore. But um, I basically just pulled every single person I work with aside. And I explained to them, you know, you're going to see some changes. I'm going to start hormones. I'm going to get surgeries. Uh, so I even took it to where, you know, with some of the female uh, coworkers, I would let them know, like, I'm going to be using the same bathroom as you now. Are you okay with that? If you want, you know, just so I can keep the respect thing mutual and everybody on, um, you know, good terms. Uh, if you want, I if I were to walk in and see you walking in at the same time or whatever, I'll wait. I'll just stand off to the side. I'll find a different bathroom. But um, luckily with the people I work with, they were, oh, no, it's no big deal. We don't care. We're, you know, we're happy for you. So for me, I was very, very fortunate where um, in the beginning, everybody was confused and shocked, you know, but... Uh, they're like, hey, as long as you're happy, you're healthy, and it's good for you, then great. What do I care? But uh, I can tell you, like, over that time now, um, yeah, they're nice on a certain level. But when it's like, hey, I need somebody to go out in the field with me for to do something, uh, it's crickets. So I typically now have to go in the field alone. And... Um, I make do with it because I can now I, I, I've been there long enough to know like, okay, this is too dangerous of a situation. I'm just not going to get involved. And then I just keep driving. So, um, you know, there's, there's times where I'm able to do that. But, uh, if I, I do need somebody with me, then I'll just radio in for somebody to come with me and I'll just sit and wait. So um, those are the types of things where it was like, in the beginning, it was tough. It was, you know, I would end up sitting in the car and crying because you just feel so alone. And it's like, what did I do? I destroyed my career and all that. But like you said before in our other video, you just get to the point to where it's like, oh, that's your loss, not mine. I'm, I'm fine. I can make do with my day. <laughs> so but that's pretty much where mine was. I don't know about you guys. Mine was pretty straightforward. I mean, so like I told my program directors and they're like, whenever um, you're ready, we're ready. Um, which was not the kind of support I was expecting. Um, I just, I decided to tell my program directors cause you know, enough of like my friends who were like, you know, at the residency program. So it was like, well, I mean, I might as well tell them so that, you know, rumors don't start spreading. Um, they were like, no, like if you wanna present to work as like your true self, I think you should. So I was like, okay, I gotta make a plan about that. So like basically as I came out to all the staff, like it was just support everywhere. 
So then one day I just showed up as me and that was it. There was no like, oh, you know, I'm going to do gender relations. It's like, no, this person is dead now. And this is who you're, this is who I'm going to be from like here, like for the rest of my life. Um, and that's just kind of how it went. It was really fast. Um, I had the support of literally everybody. Um, no, no. Like real support or was it like, 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 like yeah, my superficial absolutely support? Absolutely real support. Everyone. Real support. Like used my pronouns well. Everyone made sure that the patients were like totally fine. Like everyone had my back for everything. Um, my patients liked me more after I transitioned. Um, it was like, I think I have a really rare story in that, you know, like there were no real bumps at all. Like it was really straightforward. And I think part of it is unique just being in medicine that everyone understands, you know, this is a real thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're also all dedicated. Yeah. Um, and probably. the only the only thing is you know i couldn't change my name because um i mean everyone referred to me as alexandra but um i couldn't change my name on anything because i legally can't because that's not you know it's until like it's my legal name it has to be the same on all the doc documentation that was the um, same for me but yeah so Ultimately, um, I mean, it was like, it was, I just totally didn't expect that level of support. I mean, who really would? I mean, it's kind of unheard of in a lot of ways, especially in Texas, but it was like, like I had like everyone around me was like, this is who you are. So like, this is like the way that if you want to be like, this is just how we'll accept you. Um, so, I mean, I, I think I started coming out to people like end of September, beginning of October, and by November, end of November, I had fully transitioned, like fully socially transitioned. That was it. Done. Did job awesome. interviews as Alexandra did everything as Alexandra. That was, that was it. Question for you, both of Maya and um, Alexander, before we get to Hannah. What year and how long, like, how, what, how, what year so did you do I this, came Maya, out and what year to did you do wife, this, Alexandra? Um, October, God, it was like mid-October 2020 during COVID. <laughs> so um, came out at home. That's why. Mm -hmm. so about COVID, whether it was COVID yeah, so, or not. So um, it was in the midst of COVID. Came out then, right. and then at work, so I started hormones December of 2020, and I kind of was forced by myself in the medication to come out to certain people at work because I was starting to develop and change, and hair was growing, and you could at that point a few months yeah. you know on medication and i was on like the max of everything so the changes were happening very rapidly yeah um so i came out to my bosses and upper management in uh january and then uh i'd say around april is when i started to like start wearing makeup uh, started wearing dresses. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's 21. 21. Yeah, April and of 2021 so, uh, or 2020. That's okay. when uh, I started to really start like changing the way I dressed and you know came to work and everything. And that's when I started pulling everybody aside. And that same month is when I had my rhinoplasty uh, tracheal shave and voice feminization and then in, um let's see that's 21 so february of 22 i did facial fem 
And then July, I did breast augmentation. November, I did bottom. And yeah, that's where I'm at today. Yeah. I would worry about Alexander, where, before we get to Hannah's story, when, yeah. when was, like, so, was this in the middle of COVID? Because you're a doctor, thinking, you're yeah, hospital, was my right? brother. That was, like, April of 2020. Um, and it slowed down a little bit. I can't say, like, one or two more people. And then things picked back up in, like, June. And then, like, I came out to my wife in, like, July, and we separated, like, immediately. Um, and then, like, it was, like, my my whole attitude was like, there's nothing that's gonna stop this from happening. The chips are gonna fall where they do. Um, so I just started coming out to everybody. So the moment July and August, it was like, bam, 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 bam. Until I realized I couldn't like live as two people anymore. Cause on my, like, whenever I was outside of work, I was Alexandra. And then whenever I was at work, I was my male self. I was like, fuck this. Like, this is not tenable anymore. So September, the end of September, I came out to like my job. And then I think everybody knew by like early November. And the only thing that was left at that point in time was getting my ID and a bunch of other things fixed. So there was a couple of days of logistics that had to get worked out. And then like, that was it. Um, there was, I, I hadn't even started hormones. Um, it was just like, like, you know, I just didn't want to live like that anymore. Um, like I, I wore yeah. scrubs every day as a guy. And I think I may have worn scrubs a couple of times, like as Alexandra. And it's just like, I didn't, I just didn't feel like wearing scrubs anymore um there's a few times i had to do it and that was it uh no yeah, i don't wear scrubs anymore like i always go to work in a dress and heels and that's me um yeah yeah so you're a you're a covid you're both yeah, COVID say, babies and so april, april 20, <laughs> you 21 i came out just a few babies? days before my birthday <laughs> Uh, to my wife, and this was already three, four months after I had a really big mental breakdown um, at work. So I was actually at home working from home. And um, so the work, the stress, the anxiety, everything just built up and broke me. And so I was on a disability by the time I came out. I was doing intensive therapy. I was trying, doing everything I could to figure out what was wrong with me, knowing the whole time that I have this one secret that I've told really nobody for as long as and I've known since I was a young child. So, so when I came out, yeah, kind of accelerated story by, um, I was on hormones and I think similar to what Alexandra said, like it's, I, I couldn't do the old me like that. When I came out in April, Joel, the person I had been before was, done, gone. There was no remnants for me to pick up. And if there were remnants, they would have been way too painful for me to see. It was just, it was you intense. Like, so like when Hannah broke though, free, she was like, like the full... <laughs> fuck you, Joel. We're d yeah. I, it was so painful to even <laughs> <laughs> you pushed out, you pushed out was, they and worse, them. there was nothing when that body hit. <laughs> it was just like disintegrated. Like, I so way. I figured though, like this was such an impossibility for me to <laughs> pass, for me to be anything remotely feminine. So I was thinking like maybe two years down the road, I'll tell my work that, hey, I'm trans. You know, when I have this possibility, by <laughs> September, I was fully... <laughs> I was fully out to work. I wrote about a five, six page letter. Um, I had come out. So we have a, a mentor who helps a lot of our leadership team with development and stuff. So he was the first person in the organization I told around August. And he really encouraged me to share my story with the rest of the organization. So it, it's a national union and we have about 400 
staff, you know, from various benefits, pension to frontline representatives, which I was. And so I had this letter ready sort of made as I came out to family. It was very heartfelt. It explained who I was. And um, from what others had said, it was a letter that you just couldn't contest because it was just the rawness of self. So I had edited that uh, and sent it, sent it to our executive director, who then sent it to our um, staff council executive, which is an elected body. And, and I think a number of weeks after that, it went out to the whole organization. Um, the response was amazing, honestly. Like it, it is a union which typically sits left of center in many social issues, but uh, in many social issues like homosexuality, the LGBT community, et cetera, it is still a very conservative mindset, right? You're, I was dealing with construction workers, cement workers, healthcare, you know, hospitals and frontline long-term care. And so my, the staff that I work with across Canada, I'm a very well-known entity, and uh, it was amazing. From the women particularly, and it has been to that day, so I'm back at work, I've been back to work since last September, so about a year went by before I went back to work. And I would say, as far as the female staff, exceptional. No misgendering. It was glorious. It's just so unexpected. The men, especially the male colleagues of mine, I'm sure they may support. I have no idea. I hear neither hair nor hair. What, what the frick is that term? Hide no hair of them. And which is fine. And I don't need that male energy right now. And, you know, the, the male colleagues in my office are great because we have to talk. I support them as best I can. But um, there is always that awkwardness, right? When you are a perceived male, I was a union goon. I, I was still a very kind person, but I could get downright, you know, nasty when I needed to. And and now all of a sudden this, is, this bubbly goofy girl that's dancing through the hallway so it, it's quite an opposite and i think the males see right there's something that just hits their insecurities about that and i think it just they accept but they for them it's just an understanding that is beyond whereas women just don't seem to have that mental state of discomfort like the same so it's been good i had actually a meeting today um you know because i'm surgery so we were just talking about my return to work and you know kind of putting that on a bit of a freeze right now as far as the work that I'm doing um, and just maintaining sort of the status quo um, I, I just don't know my future with the role that I do it's heavy conflict it's aggressive it's you know even if I move into our you can do it in you can do it in a different way oh you yeah I think it's do with the female energy it doesn't yeah, mean you have to do the it nature the same way is, that did it. you can do it in the conflict resolution negotiation um you know especially if we're dealing I'll, i would be in the healthcare sector i wouldn't touch the construction yeah. anymore and and even in the healthcare sector which is so much more accommodating accepting it's just not a, it, it's not a joy-filled world you know to get a thanks for for doing something as a union rep is you know, this isn't like a front like steward or anything like, like I would hold carriage to collective agreements, you know, with hundreds of employees or thousands or, you know, some being tiny, some being massive and you know, the responsibility of that and then to maintain control of those workplaces and fighting with management, fighting with government ministers and it's a lot and I, I want to be a giver of joy. I want to be in a... Yeah. a a paradigm of joy and while I think that is such good work and the organization we do is such good work we do it in very different ways than other I I would be I would come back to work and I think three days later I would be back on mental disability it just it would break me again I need to give joy I need to give life and I just can't I, I can't do that but we'll see We'll see. Still, I'm not. I'm not closing the door yet on anything. And I told that to my organization we'll today. See. If I can move into this in the yeah, future, I, especially we'll after see. I blossom post surgery, um, we'll see. But um, I, I don't want to leave the organization, anyways.
well, it's, it, it, but, but people were relatively, but people have been reasonably accepting. I mean, you've had like, <laughs> yeah, a pretty totally. good overall, but you're again, you're a, still a COVID baby. I'm a COVID baby in, in its own weird way, but because uh, we've all transitioned within the last couple of years. It was that years, damn bad just three scene, years you know? change now. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I'll tell you mine. I had a pretty good, easy transition because I transitioned pretty much at home. Um, I didn't have, like, I just called my employer, like the guy that I work with, and I was like, okay, so I'm trans. And he's like, cool, as long as you can do your work, I don't care. <laughs> and he was like, I'll support you in any way I can. I'll go to bat for you if there's a problem, but wow. you do such great work I'm not too worried about it so <laughs> that was my kind of story they were very supportive I ended up going to see um, one of my bosses at a Starbucks and it was the first time he had physically seen me and this was only like maybe like two months ago <laughs> and I was you could see his eyes were like buggy <laughs> they were like he was like I don't know what even to say about this <laughs> he knew the old me like the six-pack dude guy and um in here i'm walking in like i was trying to be like pretty calm i wore jeans and like a crop top of course and um but the, his, his expression was like this is like a very like stable like, like he never shows his emotions <laughs> and he, he went from a hot dude to like, really fucking hot chick and fuck? now i don't know how i feel <laughs> It was, you know what, that, one of the things, I, I know this is like a total like segue into something else, but like um, male friendships and um, that kind of change. I mean, I kept a lot of my guy friends. I, I you know, like I actually was talking to one of my best friends uh, yesterday. We talked for like over an hour last night and uh, it was so, so funny, like the conversation, because it's, it's still very like jovial. It's still very like bro, you know, like bro energy. And I still have lots of bro energy. And um, like, it was a great conversation, but it was funny because I felt like the way he was talking to me was like, he's like taking care of me. <laughs> and it was like, really actually, it felt really nice actually. Like the way he was like really taking care of my emotions. And like before, I would have like said something like emotional and he would have been like, stop being such a girl. Like, now he would never say that. Like now he's like so much more careful and he's like really, you know, you know, saying all this stuff. And it was just a really like a great conversation. And I felt so fulfilled after and it was very, very different than the pre-transition conversation even though we were very like good friends and like totally took care of each other like in that way but you know like the way guys take care of each other is they make fun of each other right like <laughs> you say something stupid your buddies are gonna call you on it and now he's like so much more like gentle <laughs> and so like more like soft and stuff it's really nice i gotta tell you what have your experiences been with the guy friends and has the relationship that you have with them shifted so for or do me, you have any relationships with guys? I lost all of them. Um, and like what Hannah said before, I don't need that energy anyway. So I welcome it. Um, I would say the handful of women that stuck by my side during my transition at work, uh, that only like concreted our friendship even more because uh, they've been there for me, they've helped me, they've, you know, um, in the very beginning, I was terrified to go to the bathroom and all of that. And they would, like, go in with me and stand guard. So, like, the, the few that stuck with me, they're like my sister's ride or die till the day I die, you know. So, um, and then just building this new friendship within our community with you guys, um, you know, all the others on uh, Instagram and all of that. So um, I welcome it. I'm happy. You know, I'm, 
whoever I lost, I lost it. I don't think about them anymore. So, uh, yeah, if, if they can't accept me as a better version of myself, then they don't get to enjoy and embrace the good times that are ahead. So, yeah. I would. That's right. It's, yeah. yeah, it's nice to be, and the people that know, stick nice by your side, that, you know, again, that just yeah, shows yeah. like, they're really there for you. You know, they are your true friend. All the others were just like, I don't know, I don't want to say parasites, because I did have some good friends. But now that they're, they're exactly, yeah, but the, yeah, you don't get to pick and know, choose when it's good times are not you. friends at all. So. Um, no. Exactly. I think. What about you? And I want to let you guys. I wouldn't say I have the friend community that I have now. It's amazing, right? Because it, it's also so much more natural and real. And some of them are a little in. The, I'm just yeah, kidding. right. I love you. And <laughs> I, I, I mourn one of my friends now. I know he's going through some of his own struggles. So I think a lot of the distance is more applied to that. He just doesn't have the capacity to. I think to invite this in, so it's not necessary. It's not a negative. It's it's a, a mental health journey of that person's own, and the friendship that we had was so. Yeah, he was he was my, my brother in that regard, and I I think the pain of that loss, the grief, is is sort of another hit to his mental health, and so I think that one is sort of in a a, a room of grace. You know, when that person is ready to come back, because I have no doubt when that person is healthy, the support level will be there. But I, I think for any other male friend or contact, it has been, yeah, for the most part, I would say non-existent. And that's not to say, I think it's a more exaggerated version of when a good friend of yours gets married and has kids and you continue leave, living, you know, sort of that more single life life or the child life that you know the dink life the dual single income yeah. dual income no kids you know it just sort of diverges and i think that's more just what happened is i don't want to put the energy into it i don't want to explain this i yeah i think so, and some of my friends had said well i don't know what to tell my kids i don't think they won't understand and i'm like well your kids will understand just fine you don't and uh -huh. and right at that point i'm like i don't have the energy to fight right. this you either accept this as real because you should know me um so it hurts but at the end of the day i yeah i love this community i love the feminine energy i love the workplace now where my female colleagues and staff are just amazing people and that's all i need right now is is people that just can see me for who i am and um, I have a lot of those right now. And, you know, you all are a big part of that. So I like you girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for Paul's Springs again. <laughs> oh, yeah. All of them stuck around. Kidding. Okay, Alexandra. Like, male friends. I. Yeah, so not I surprised. With your energy, you have in the best way, though, Alexander. It's <laughs> yes, totally. I love it. So, oh, like, in the best way, like totally. my best friends are still my best friends. We all hang out. It's literally like nothing changed at all. The only funny thing is, like, I'll be hanging out with like my guy friends, and then I'm like, I'm gonna go hang out with their wives now. So then I go slink over there, go hang out and talk with the wives for a bit, and it's just like. It's just like that, that duality. Um, yeah, it's um, I do, like, I, I that same duality. none totally. of them, none of my friends left me, period. Like none, they were just like, oh yeah. Like at first they're like, oh wow. And then they're like, you know, they're like looking back. Yeah, like it's all there. Like everyone could tell there was something different. You quite know what it was. Like, everyone was like, well, we just kind of assumed gay, even though you weren't gay. Um, and I was like, well, you know, trans fits too. We still love you. <laughs> you know, I 
I think a lot of a lot of them were like, um, this is, this is going to be different. And then they like meet me and they're like, oh, no, it's not different at all. Like, not at all. <laughs> like, um... <laughs> so funny because Why? you're the straight girl and you have the most bro energy. <laughs> so like, right, I, like, right I don't know how I that worked on, out exactly. I was playing Pokemon with like some of my high school friends. <laughs> um, and Dude, right, and one of all, and one of them was like, "Oh, the three of us ride again." And I was like, "Lol, yeah, <laughs> like the old days." Um, uh, I like what, like my my best friend since like I was like six years old. He was like, you know, I was kind of worried that this would be different, but no, like you're 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 the exact same fucking person. Like, you just look different. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the point. I didn't really change that much. Um, that, isn't, that, isn't that the way for all of us, though? Like, I mean, we might have, like, changed in some ways, but, like, intrinsically, I feel like I'm the same person. Right? Like, like I, I, I don't feel like I've changed all that much. I'm like, I'm still I the think same I think the differences that I are very before. subtle. I think the core is ve is very much the same. Um, I think some people, some people, I think would say I'm nicer yeah, generally. Exactly. I think I'm meaner. Um, <laughs> I want you to see mean, Alexandra. No. <laughs> you haven't seen me. You haven't seen me like, yeah, yeah, you're not mean at all. <laughs> yeah, man. Maybe that might be a good you way of saying it. Um, I could see you just not taking any shit. That's what I could see. Like I, I could just see you just. Yeah. Anna is a yeah. Just, no. I would love, love to see that. <laughs> is a I'm all soft. He has no edge. But so are you. You just are better at pretending. That <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a spiked ball made out of iron. Oh, you're I feel a like, I feel like if, you're in, if you're a ball made of iron, like we touch you and then we find out, it's, like it's yeah, your fault. a little like a little balloon ball. It's like <laughs> oh my god, it hurts. it's actually fun. Shut, shut up! <laughs> shut up! I'll be you. I'll be. <laughs> Oh, I think Alexander, this is you. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I, I think you're killing my straight street. Victoria. Okay, enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Probably. so that's that. I think I'm way tougher than than Hannah for sure. I think you are. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm tougher than Maya. <laughs> I think Maya. I'm yeah, not but sure. I'm not sure. You did MMA. I've never been punched. Those. That's all Bro, long gone. For my me. Life. I'll I've never no pick up another glove or do any of that ever again. <laughs> so yeah. That's, well, then then, then then we have like the martial arts it's expert over fun. here. Fun. <laughs> like, Don't forget my black belt. People always love. Them. <laughs> I didn't How many of us have Oh, black Hannah has a black here. belt. Did you know like this? Oh. oh, okay. But they're. I call it a foreigner's black belt. <laughs> so I don't. What do you have, have a black belt like, in? You, you have where I've gotten the belts. When, what, when you do MMA, you it's MMA. like one day you're going to do jiu-jitsu, the next day you're going to do Muay Thai, the next day you're going to do just like Greco wrestling. Oh, wow. Okay, I so you're, you're in MMA, Ken is in Taekwondo, Alexander, what are you? BJJ. Yeah. <laughs> I found out that I, I got that too. I went shopping, but like for her. <laughs> You know, you know, for sure, I got my black belt. Uh, <laughs> I my black belt. Those I are the only ones that matter now. And shit <laughs> I, 
I have the best. I have the best shit talk. I can talk shit talk to anybody. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Gretchen over here. I'm like, we on Wednesdays we wear pink. So we're you know, we're big. We're like your little minions. You start the shit, and then like, like. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's exactly what I do. I actually like will walk into a situation, <laughs> I'll raise you're, a whole bunch you're of shit, a boss and then I'll run away. Vicky, Vicky, totally. I'd be like, I'd be like, I'd be like you. You're well, you know what's you, funny you're is when we were in Bye. Palm Springs <laughs> and we had that little incident at the restaurant. Hannah, I thought you were gonna get up and like. Oh, I was put... fucking furious. Yeah, like those sort of situations. That's when I would say that's when I can get really ignited. And I have yet in in in, in this true state <laughs> to do that. I think in in my old state, I probably would have actually just done something, especially to some old white couple. <laughs> like to me, that is just. What? I am not scared of that. Like I welcome to America. Right? <laughs> can you can you, uh, can you tell us? Can you tell the situation? Because whoever's listening doesn't know what we're talking about. Well, so yeah. uh, someone we tell were the story. To Palm Springs. Uh, Hannah, go. Why <laughs> I had come to visit? It was amazing. We had so much good time. I think we had chosen a Peruvian restaurant <laughs> somewhere along the strip. Amazing food. It's so good. But it was kind of this weird dive sports bar. It just didn't have a good restaurant vibe, but it was, it had amazing food. And so as we walked in, there was this older, clearly conservative, right? You have kind of that golfer rich crowd that's there in, you know, fairly, well, not fairly, it is under exaggeration. It is a very gay town. And, and so it, it just sort of surprised me in some ways that that intolerance is just so open there when you're in a community where you're going to see this stuff. Anyway, so they had just started making some comments. Um, it, I, I think, unfortunately, was directed strangely more at you, Maya. Like, I, I don't understand why. And, but it, I, we all stood out, except for Soli, who was the only cisgendered woman there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, well, Soli stood out. And, and they, but they just them. kept on... You know, so for those listening, they just kept on. It was just, you know, that sort of background chatter that, you know, this husband and wife were having across the table behind us. And, but you know, they were talking just loud enough because they want you to hear. And yeah, I, I think we were all getting pretty frustrated. And for me to, like, that's when my justice warrior comes out. That's my union rep coming out. For me, when I see that stuff, it, it it's a type of con conflict that I feel more comfortable in because it's going to be more verbal, at least in Canada. <laughs> Here you'll <laughs> not you'll see the possibility of a gun coming out. Yeah. And <laughs> even your most conservative Canadian is not going to be carrying a sidearm. So yeah, I'm kind of glad nothing happened. I'm sure nothing would have anyways. But I, I know for me personally, that was just something I, I don't know how to deal with. And, and I saw just for me, I saw something that I could handle, and and I'm really glad. Um, it didn't I'm, escalate. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> I kind of wish I had. A, I wish. I wish. I wish. In some ways, I wish I had sat because at that time I was definitely mm -hmm. the most. I, I I had been on I've been on hormones longer than all three of you, so. I, I really wish he had said something to me where I could have heard it because I would have turned around and like laid it on him, like for sure. <laughs> I wish he had said something. I wish he had said something because I would have, not that I look for the opportunity to be confrontational because I'm the absolutely least confrontational person. But at that state, the four of us were together. I, I mean, I would have loved, I would have loved for him to say something to me. <laughs> I would have, I would have like, I would have eaten it. would have been four like, oh, very really? bitchy yes, queer oh, women yeah. just like, laying yeah. into this couple. It would have been, <laughs> and, and <laughs> been all... wonderful to watch in some ways, as long as nothing dangerous happens. <laughs> <laughs> I would have raised up all the shit and then I would have let you two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
But no, that was like the first time where I, was, I saw the, the anger in Hannah and I was like, oh shit, yeah, we got to get out of here. But luckily, uh, you know, I think it was mostly directed at me because I was in direct view of him. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, and you were more dressed to party, right? Because we're going to go out that night. Yeah. I think Ricky and I and Soli, we hadn't dressed up yet. So you were quite a bit more beautiful and and noticeable because you wore that beautiful pink or peach kind of salmon dress and it was just gorgeous and i think that i think for the setting as well it just it just contrasted i think the rest of the people that were in there and i think that also it just unfortunately made a target for the goofy couple so. yeah <laughs> i don't like it when people do that to oh. my friends so for me i, He's so I sad. didn't like that at all and then because i also feel at risk as my, as myself too sure, yeah no no that sucks but okay. yeah, yeah i, I gotta walk my house i think we're done yeah, very much. It's only it's 8 for me <laughs> we've talked for three hours <laughs> i really